Hey, hey everybody, uh, now that we are back with this next part, so we talked about the rules individually, we talked about the product rule, we talked about the quotient rule, then we talked about the power rule, we did them individually, so now we get to put them all together. So at this point, we're talking about expanding logarithmic expressions. So with these, we're going to follow the steps to expand log expressions, and that's doing the product rule, then doing the quotient rule, and then doing the power rule. Now again, when it comes to this, when we expand these out, remember each thing inside of there gets a log, each um, uh, variable gets a log, so everything gets a log that's inside of there, so we're going to just make sure we do that part so we can do the Oprah, you get a log, you get a log, you all get a log, so we're going to do that for each one of these. All right. So the only thing I would say here is what's in this yellow box. So it says, if one of the rules is not present in the problem, so in other words, if the pro product rule is not there, like there's no multiplication happening in the in, in it, we don't do the product rule. We just skip it and then go to the next rule that's there. So if product rule is not there, then we skip it and go to quotient rule. If quotient rule is not there, then we skip it and go to power rule. So we, on, we skip something if it is not there. So again, product rule means if there's multiplication happening, we do that. Quotient rule means that if there's division going on in there, that means we do that. And then power rule means if there's any exponents, we use that. So that's the important parts there. So we need to follow those rules to a T. And now the biggest thing here is for us, we go to example 4a. We have log x to the fourth, the cube root of y, all base b. And with that, again, everything inside gets a log. So like the variables get a log. So we're going to take a look at each one of these before we actually move into it. And we say, okay, the, um, we talked about our product rule first. That's the first thing we have to do because that's our first part in this whole thing. So product rule says if there's any multiplication happening, we split them apart and we put addition in the middle. So again, here is there multipl multiplication happening? And yes, you should be able to see it's right there, right there. So it's x to the fourth times the cube root of y. So the product rule is right there. So let's go ahead and break this apart. So you get a log, you get a log, and put addition in the middle. So this whole x to the fourth gets a log. This whole cube root of y to the cube root of y gets a log. So let's do that part. So log x to the fourth base b and here the question is is x to the fourth an exponent or is that on is the x is on the same line as log and hopefully everybody sees that the x is on the same line as the log so the x to the fourth gets a log the cube root of y gets a log and we put addition in the middle so they got a log they got a log, and we put addition in the middle. Okay, so then we go to our quotient rule and see, is there any division going on here? And hopefully you look at that and see, well, there's no division happening at all here, like in this problem originally, no division is happening, so that means there's no quotient rule. So we say none. There's nothing there. None. None at all. All right, so then, and let me go ahead and put this up here because I need to, oh, Jesus, that's not what I need. Uh, yeah, let's do that. All right, so the last thing is if there's any power rule going on. And the whole thing is there is a power, there is two power rules happening. But the biggest thing again is this part right here, and I'm using green so we'll know that this is the, the actual step we need to make sure we have. We know this actually should be a fraction exponent. We understood, there's an understood one underneath here, and there's a three here. So we said the bottom number, the number, the number that is under the radical becomes your numerator. We said the number that's in front, the radicand, is your denominator. So we should have that going on automatically. So I'm going to write that down. So I'm going to pretty much write what was in blue, but let's change that radical to a fraction exponent. And that's just because I don't have room down here at the bottom, so I have to do it up top, up there and up there. 
All right, so again, if anybody's confused on what just happened there, either go back to the last video we just did with the power rule and everything, or call me over again and I'll be, I'm right here. So just make sure I'm in the room with you. So just ask a question. Don't just sit there and do nothing. All right, so now we're going to do the power rule. So now we're going to take this and move that to the front. We're going to take this and move it into the front. And we should be done. And so let's do that in green. Let me go and move this next part down because you don't need to see that part yet. You get to that in a few seconds. You don't need to see that part yet. And or this part either. You get to that in a few seconds. Alright, so that's our final answer. There's nothing we can put into the calculator. There's nothing else we can do there because there's variables inside of all of it. So there's nothing that we can do to put in the calculator. So that's our final answer. So again, we did our power rule, change uh with a product rule where there's a multiplication. We gave this a log, we gave this a log, and then put addition in the middle. There's no division happening there, so we didn't do quotient rule. And then our power rule, we changed our radical to the fraction exponent like we did before. And then we just moved all of our exponents in front. And we have this going on. And that's it. That's all you got to do. So hopefully no questions on that part, because that, that's actually pretty easy, I, I think. But everybody says I'm a math teacher, so it should be easy anyway. So... Hopefully that's all you need. So let's go to part B and see another one and see hopefully this one makes sense too. I hope. Oh Lord. So much stuff going on. Alright, so now we deal with a fraction. And this is an important thing to understand and know. So we're going to write what's in blue and that is a fraction bar there. Division going on. And I also want you to write what's in the blue. The black and the blue. The black and the blue. Like you can't beat up or something, the black and blue. But um, black and blue, I want you to write all of that down because it's important. So if you pause the video now, you can go ahead and pause it and write it down and then keep listening to what I said later on. Okay, so you wrote down the black part, the uh, log part, and you see it says with, I should say with a fraction. Let's, let's add this in there. With a fraction. The first step is to put a log with a numerator, with the numerator and the denominator. And so some of you guys are like, huh? Put a log with a numerator and denominator. What? Say what? So let's do this part. Let's show you. So we all should know our t the names of our parts of a fraction. So we know here our numerator is up top. I hope. Please remember that, I hope. And our denominator is on the bottom. our denominator all right so we when we do this we're going to put a log with the numerator and log with the denominator and we keep the we will keep the division bar there so let's go ahead and do that really quickly so uh, the fifth root of t And again, these these fives are base numbers, so they're below the log, and not on the same line as the log. So you gotta be careful, attention precision on that one. It's important that you put it below the log, not up with the log. So the log and this is on the same line. Log and the one twenty six x to uh, one twenty six x to the seventh are on the same line. The, these fives are base numbers; they're below. All right. So the first thing we have to do is our product rule. So let's go to product rule. I'm going to change colors from what I did up top because I already used red, so it's going to throw things off a little bit. All right, so we're going to start off with our product rule. So is there any multiplication happening here for this problem? And hopefully everybody says yes because it's right there. So that means our numerator, leave alone. Do not touch the numerator at all. And so here, 26 gets a log, and x to the 7th gets a log. So we get that part. So that's our product rule. 
we did the product and multiplied. All right, so then we go to our quotient rule. And I'm going to put this over here. And anything that has a division bar, we just put a subtraction. So that means we keep our numerator, division goes to subtraction, and then these stay as they are. But also, here's one thing I'm going to do also. I'm going to put a parenthesis around our denominator here just to say that this is the bottom part of our fraction. So I'm going to put a parenthesis around that to say, ooh, ooh, my, my fault. And I'm grab people, I bet you people are saying this. So that should be x to the seventh right there, not 126. So hopefully you changed that and you didn't call me over it. You didn't saw the video and say, oh, that's wrong, that's wrong. So hopefully you did that part. You changed it and you had that right the first time because I messed up on that. My bad, my bad, my fault. All right, so now the next thing here is going to go ahead and do our quotient rule. So that means any division bar that we have, we're going to put a subtraction sign there. So here, let's go and put our division bar into a subtraction. So here, and then again, we're going to put parentheses right here for, so that we will know this is all our denominator. Uh, gotta hurry up, gotta hurry up, mm, mm, mm. gotta hurry up, gotta hurry up. Mm, mm. All right, so that's our quotient rule. So we took its subtraction and made it division, uh, so to division and made subtraction. All right, and then our um, power rule. And again, before we do our power rule, we need to change any radicals to fraction exponents. And we have one right here. So we're going to change this to a fraction exponent. Uh, and understood, it's an understood one right here for the t. So what's our fraction exponent going to be here? You're right, one over five. You're smart. You are so smart. You got me. You good. You good. All right, so we get this. So the only thing that changed there so far was just change our fraction exponent. And remember again, fives are our base numbers, so they're the, only, they're the only ones that should be lower than the log. Everything else should be the same line as the log or an exponent. All right, so then the last thing is moving your exponents to the front, moving these to the very front. That one and the seven back here, oh Lord, the seven back here. All right, so let's go ahead and move those into the front. That keeps popping up there. I don't understand why. And no, the one fifth is not an exponent either. It just goes directly in front. So hopefully you're paying attention to that. We don't just make up stuff for math. We follow the same process each time. So with this, the seven is not an exponent. It's not big or whatever, like as an exponent type thing. It's actually on the same line. All right, so the last thing and hopefully everybody has their calculator. We're going to put that log 126 base 5 into the calculator because it's all numbers. Yay! Woo, 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 woo. Yay, numbers! So that's the only one we can put in the calculator because log 126 over log 5 are both numbers that you can put into the calculator. And I just told you again how to do it. So log 126 over log 5. You don't forget to close your parentheses when you put it in. And everybody should get like a three digit number there. And so we're going to round that to 3.005. Three decimal places, guys. Three decimal places. Three decimal places. It gives me a chance to see how well you know how to round and everything, too. Is that because you're not doing the best right now with the rounding? So make sure you round correctly. Make sure you round correctly. Make sure you round correctly. Right, and then that's our answer. So we're pulling everything together to make up this whole thing. So hopefully it's not that bad. And if it is, we'll have practice problems and everything to work on. If you need more help, I can give you more help. So this is two examples of them to, to help, two of them to help you. And now we're going to have a practice next. All right, so I'll see you in that next video.